The message today is called Get in the Boat. So I'm glad you joined in. I'm glad you're watching. Share this at the end of the, uh, of the message. After you watch it, share it. Share it with your friends. Send it to your neighbors. Whatever. Whatever social media or whatever, send it. I believe they are going to get blessed. So, but before we do, let us pray. Dear God, we just want to thank you, Lord Jesus. We want to thank you in everything that you're doing, Lord God. We want to honor you this morning, Lord God. We want to praise and worship you this morning, Lord God. We want to receive from you, Lord God, from your spirit, Lord God. We want to receive your word, Lord God. We want to receive a miracle, Lord God. You know what everybody's dealing with, Lord God. Bless them, Lord God. Open up their hearts, their minds, our, our, their ears, their bodies, Lord God, to receive your message. Lord God, we thank you in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Get in the boat. Today's message, we're coming out of... We are coming out of uh, Hebrews 11.7. Hebrews 11.7. Now, if you want to read, this is the story of Noah. If you want to read the full story of Noah, go to Genesis 6. But you can do that afterwards. That way you get the full thing of it. I'm just going to touch a little bit about it. But if you want to read the full story of, uh, uh, of Noah and the boat, the ark, right? You go to Genesis 6 afterwards, amen? But we're going to Hebrews 11, 7. And it says this, By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, so he hadn't seen nothing, by faith, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness that is in keeping with the faith. Amen. So it says, by faith. You see, you have to understand something, that Noah built an ark by faith. There was no rain, there was no water, there wasn't any signs that there was going to be a huge flood. Right? There was nothing. So by faith. And it says here, in holy fear. What does that mean, in holy fear? Does that mean that Noah was so terrified, so scared of, of God that he built it? No, no, no. That, that's not what it means. See, you have to understand that the fear of the Lord is the obedience in the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the obedience in the Lord. Meaning that God gave him a warning. God told him to do something. And Noah, by faith, in obedience started doing it. He was obedient to God. It is very crucial to be obedient to God when he tells us something to do. And when he tells us something, it's because something is happening. Amen? In this case, if Noah would have been a, a, obedient to God, he would have drowned. His family would have drowned. Amen? But he was obedient. Yet there was no signs, there was no warnings, there was nothing going on in the world that signified that there was going to be a flood, yet he had faith in the Word of God. He trusted in God. So he trusted in God. He was obedient to God. He had faith in God. Amen. And that's something that we have to do in times of hardship, in times of trouble, in times of uh, tri the, uh, 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 depression, when things hit, or when our family, and all these things, crazy things are happening. We must get closer to God, trust Him, have faith, and have obedience. Amen. Very key things. Now, Noah wasn't saved because he was a perfect person. Noah, you have to understand. Well, it says here, the righteousness. Yes, he became the righteousness. Through faith, through obedience. So, check this out. He wasn't a perfect person. He didn't get saved because he was a perfect person. He got saved because he put his trust, his faith, and his obedience in God, and through that, him and his family received the grace of God. It is through grace that God saves us. Not because we deserve it and we earn it and, and all those things, but it's through God's grace that he blesses us. 
It's through God's grace that He makes us abundant. It's through God's grace that the righteousness of Christ is in us. Through God's grace. So you have to understand, He wasn't perfect. The Bible says that no one is perfect, but only God. So, we're not perfect. So, what does that mean? That means there is hope. Amen. God today is saying, get in the boat. Will you receive grace? Amen. Will you receive grace today and get in the boat? See, there's something that God wants to save you from. But in order to do that, you must get in the boat. See, in the days of Noah, there was a lot of people probably walking, passing by Noah while he was building this humongous ark, right? And they probably called him crazy, and they, they probably laughed at him, and they're like, you know, we're not even around the ocean. I mean, what is this? See, there's always people going to talk mess about you or criticize you for doing what God has told you to do. But you must not worry about those things. You must just do what God told you to do. Amen? In today's message, he's telling you to get in the boat. Get in the boat. I don't think... So, that's amazing. God is not telling you to build the boat. He's just telling you to get in it. He told Noah to build the boat. But God's telling you just to get in the boat. Easy as that, huh? Well, it takes some obedience. It takes some faith. It takes a lot of people calling you crazy. Right? Now, you have to understand. So, when I was younger, uh, uh, when I first got saved, I, I, I used to have this van. And in this van, I would drive it and go around the block and pick up all the homies. I would pull up and, and I would tell them, hey, hey, get in, hurry, get in. And they would get in. A lot of times they would have weapons on them or, 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 or things and, then, and some of them would be like, hold on, hold on, let me run in the house. They run in the house, grab a bat, come back out, jump in, jump in, hurry. And I would fill up the van. And then afterwards they were like, okay, where are we going, G? Where, what are we doing? Are we, are, are we about to fight? Who are we about to beat up? And I'm like, and they would ask me, where are we going? We're going to church. And I would take him to church. See, they probably wouldn't have got in if I told them I was picking them up for church. Now, they would get in to fight and to do some damage, but they probably wouldn't have got in if I told them I was taking them to church. God is not saying for you to get in the van. Like I used to tell my friends, get in the van. Now, he's saying, get in the boat. Me and my wife's first date that I picked her up at, to take her on our first date, she didn't even know where she was going. I took her to church. Amen. I don't know if she would have went, if she knew, but it's too late now. We've been married for a very long time. There ain't no getting off this boat, baby. We're on it. We're on it together. And we're cruising. Sometimes it rocks back and forth, but we're on it together, amen, with Jesus Christ. Jesus is saying, get in the boat. Today you need to get in the boat. There is blessings, there is tranquility, there is peace, there is love, there is understanding, there is wisdom, there is abundance, there is joy. All that is in the boat. God is saying, get in the boat. 
See, in the days of Noah, that boat was humongous. It would have fit a lot of people. But only Noah and his family were saved in that boat. Now, there's only one way into getting into this boat. There was only one door on the boat. There was only one door through where the animals came in, the humans came in, and they came out. One door. Understand that. In John 10, verse 9, Jesus is saying, I am the door. I am the way, right? He doesn't say, I am the way. But Jesus had said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In John 10, 9, he says this, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So just like the boat, there's one door. There's not many ways to get in. I know a lot of religions say, oh, there's many ways to get into heaven, but there isn't. There is only one door, and through that door is going through Jesus Christ. He is the only way. He is the only truth. He is the only life. He is the door. That boat had one door. There is only one way to get saved, and that is going through Jesus Christ. He is the door. Now, like I said, in John 10... Verse 10, it says, The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. See, Jesus is your Savior. The thief comes to kill, destroy all the good things in your life. He is the enemy. He is the thief. Amen? Amen? The thief wants to drown you. The enemy wants to drown you. But under, uh, understand that he can't drown you. There's nothing that the enemy, there's nothing that the devil can do to you. And so what does he do? He can whisper things to you. Oh, don't get in that boat. Stay out here. It'll be fine. There's no rain coming. There's nothing happening. There's a, look it, there's nothing. He wants to see you drown. But it's ultimately our choice. It is our choice. Let me put it to you this way. Your haters want to see you drown. Some of your friends, some of even your family members want to see you drown. Not because they hate you so much, just because they are drowning too. And misery loves company. What does that mean? Some of your friends don't want to see you doing greatness. There's a lot of greatness that God wants to do in your life. But you must get in the boat. He must take you to another level for that greatness, for those blessings, for that green pasture. It takes for you to get in the boat. The enemy doesn't want to see you being blessed. The enemy doesn't want to see you being happy. The enemy doesn't want to see you being abundant, overfilled with joy, love, peace, understanding, wisdom. He wants to see you drown. I know there's a lot of haters on social media just want, oh yeah, look at that, look at that person, oh look at this. They're drowning, they want to see you drown. They're in debt, they want to see you in debt. They're suffering, they want to see you suffering. They're wasting their lives away in the bar. They want to see you wasting their, your life away in the bar. They don't want to see you happy. But God does. 
God wants to see you happy. What did he say? He said that he came that you may have life and life more abundantly. He, Jesus didn't say, hey, I came that, uh, that your, love, your life uh, would suck. No, 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 that, that's not what it says. You have to understand that. Amen? God is saying, get in the boat. Now, don't misunderstand. Listen, when you get in the boat, there was a time in Noah when they got him and his family and God saved them and they got in the boat that the waves were rocky and that that boat was shaking back and forth and it was crazy and they probably didn't think that they were going to survive and it was scary okay so i'm not saying when you receive jesus christ when you are a follower of christ when you follow god's instructions that everything is going to be lollipops and unicorns and happy yeah. uh, no there's going to be some rocky boat waves crashing back and forth there's going to be some times but you must understand that in God's boat, in God's hands, there is peace, there is tranquility. Know that when God has you in his boat of hands and arms that nothing can harm you. It doesn't matter what everything around the world looks like going disaster and all this or a coronavirus and all these crazy stuff that are happening in this world and life it's gonna get a little rocky but see when it gets a little rocky and you put your trust and faith in God you are gonna be okay now, it's not gonna look okay but you will be okay when you get in that boat. It may even rock your faith a little. But know this. There is peace. There is love. There is tranquility. In God's boat. See? Because when we're obedient, obedient to God... He didn't say that life was going to be very easy. But he promised that he would always be right there with you. Jesus was in the boat. Amen. He was right there with them, protecting them. Providing for them. I don't know if they had chickens in the boat. Ah, they, they must have had chickens in the boat because there's chickens now. So I guess they did have chickens in the boat. So when they're like, hey, I need some eggs, God provided, amen? I love eggs. I had eggs this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Now, know this, that God has you when you're in the boat. And know this, that after the rocky times when the boat settled and the water evaporated, when the water went out, what happened? There was green pastures. There was blessings. There was a multiplication of abundance. There was an overflow. There was a new beginning and a new start. When that boat settled, there was a new whole world in their eyesight. If you have gotten in the boat, okay, and you're going through rocky waters right now, your blessings are coming. Keep your faith, keep your trust. It's coming. It might not be as fast as you want it to be, but no. That God is right on time. Now, if you haven't got in the boat, 
this is the time to get in the boat. This is your time right now. God is saying, get in the boat. And I'm going to read you one more scripture in Matthew 24, verse 36. This is Jesus talking. And it says this. But about the day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. But up to the day of Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Jesus is saying, at the end of the road, even when you die, or when Jesus returns, understand that it's going to be like the day of Noah. They did not expect it. They did not believe it. They were not ready for it. Noah was ready. Will you be ready? Get in the boat. This is your chance. If you've never been in the boat, and, and, and this is your chance. If you have gotten off the boat, this is your chance. Get back in the boat. God is saying, get in the boat. God's not telling you to rebuild a whole new level. He's saying, just get in. My grace is sufficient enough for you. God's grace is abundant. But understand this. Noah did not shut the door to the boat. God did. And when God shut it, no man could open it. When God opens it, no man can shut. See, when God shut the door to the boat, that was it. No more people were getting in. No more animals were getting in. That was it. Don't be left behind. Get in the boat. Today is the day. Don't say tomorrow. Don't wait. Make that decision today. Get in the boat. There's green pastures. There's an abundance. There's a new life. Get in the boat. I hope this message blessed you. I hope you receive it. And know that if you're in the boat right now, stay in the boat. God has you in the palm of his hands. You're in good hands. Amen. Let us pray. For you that, that, that want to get in the boat for the first time, for you that want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to say a little prayer with you. Okay? God's grace is sufficient. Now, well, I'm not perfect, Pastor David. I'm not, I, you know, I don't deserve it. Neither do I. But God's grace is sufficient for you. So let us pray. Dear God, we thank you, Lord God. We honor you. We're sorry, Lord God. We're sorry for our sins, Lord God. Please forgive us, Lord Jesus. Fill me up with your spirit, Lord God. Forgive me of all my sins. And write my name in the book of life, Lord God. I receive you, Jesus Christ, into my life as my Lord and Savior. I put my trust in you, and I will try my hardest to obey you. I know that I'm not perfect, but God, your grace is good. Your mercy is good. We thank you in your precious name. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed day, and share this. <laughs>